Control Houston and welcome as we get ready for the journey of four crew members from on board the International Space Station getting ready to head on home to planet Earth. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt coming to you live from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center. On your camera, you're looking at a Dragon spacecraft. That's not the one we're actually going to be using today, uh, but the crew members will soon be loading into uh, the Dragon dock to the forward port on the International Space Station, loading in and getting ready to come home, and they are part of the NASA's SpaceX Crew-5 mission. They're on board the International Space Station right now getting ready. We don't have views inside quite yet, but we'll soon join them as they're in the final stages of preparing to come home. They're going to be led throughout the flight back by NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. She's going to be wrapping up her first space flight alongside NASA astronaut and Crew-5 pilot Josh Cassida. Filling out the rest of the crew, we have Koichi Wakata from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. He's on the right there. He's the veteran. He actually just passed his 500th cumulative day in space just the other day. Getting ready to wrap up another long duration stay on board the station. And then all the way on the left there, Rose Cosmos, Cosmonaut Anna Kikina, also wrapping up her first mission. And Dragon, we did not copy that, um, but we copy it now. Dragon Endurance hatch is closed. Uh, we've got a command to send here, and you should see the flight computer state progress to hatch closed uh, imminently. Okay, we'll stand by for that, and then we'll check the PTRD ISO valve. And just a heads up, it seems like we were out of calm there for probably two minutes or so. Okay, copy. Yeah, two to three minute uh, unexpected loss of calm, and, and that was unexpected. We copy. Dragon copy. All right, and from that conversation right there, we heard confirmation that the Dragon Endurance hatch is closed. So that hatch closed coming right at about 11.29 p.m. Central Time, 12.29 p.m. Eastern, getting us one step closer to NASA SpaceX Crew-5 coming on home. So with that hatch closed, we're going to see the APAS hatch get closed next. And then they're going to open an isolation valve on the Dragon hatch side. And that's going to start venting uh, that atmosphere that's currently in the vestibule, that space between Dragon and Station overboard, bringing it down to vacuum and getting us close to an undocking. We are targeting undock today at 1.05 a.m. Central Time. Um, so in just a little over an hour and a half from now. Before we get there, we'll do the vestibule depress, leak checks on the hatch, uh, before we get ready to depart. So 1.05 a.m. Central Time, 2.05 a.m. Eastern, that's 7.05 GMT. We're looking for Dragon to undock. Once we undock, we'll do a series of departure burns, bringing Dragon away from the International Space Station, eventually moving it out beneath and in front of it, getting it ready for the journey home. It's going to be about 19 hours from undock command until splashdown. We're looking at a splashdown tomorrow night, or tonight, depending on where you are, um, at about uh, 8.02 p.m. Central Time, 9.02 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2.02 in the morning uh, on Sunday for GMT. Uh, but it will be about a 19-hour trip from undocking all the way to splashdown off the coast of Florida for the crew, five astronauts and cosmonaut. While they fly, they'll essentially be in an off-duty phase where um, they'll just be able to get out of their suits uh, just monitor Dragon systems and relax before they essentially take the plunge back through the Earth's atmosphere, splash down where we're going to have recovery teams uh, on a recovery ship, ready to get them out of the water and then get them home pretty quickly. They won't have to stop at any waypoints like we see when they arrive to the space station. Yeah, uh, and once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon does use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station, like you mentioned, Leah. Um, there's a series of maneuvers. We call them departure burns. For this mission, there'll be four, and they increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. From there, Dragon performs a uh, phasing burn, and then that puts it on the right target to get back home for the splashdown location. 
And uh, just a quick pause to say we did just get a good vestibule leak check, so that means that things are marching forward for our undock today. But wrapping up its trip home tomorrow, March 11th, Dragon will go through the deorbit entry. In Endurance, SpaceX on the big loop. Final reconfigurations for undock complete and nominal. Houston and Hawthorne teams have pulled go for the undock sequence start at 0715 and separation at 0720. When ready, confirm visors down and crew are ready for undock and departure. Dragon copies. Crew, all visors are down. We are ready for undock and departure. We copy. Standing by for physical separation. All hooks open. All hooks open, depart burn one has fired Dragon Endurance undocked 262 statute miles over and the Coral Dragon Sea. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, separation confirmed. Second copy, we see it. So a successful separation again, Dragon undocking at 1.20 a.m. Central Time, 2.20 a.m. Eastern Time with Dragon and Station flying 262 statute miles over the Coral Sea off the northeastern coast of Australia. So with that, Dragon now stepping into Depart these burn zero burns. nominal. Dragon copy. All right, so undock burns completed, that depart burn zero completed. Next one coming up in just a couple of minutes, but with Dragon now flying free, I'm going to toss it back over to Shiva and Leah at MCCX and Hawthorne to take us through the rest of the flight. Thanks a bunch, Dan. So we had some great shots there of the first depart burn. Uh, we're coming up on depart burn. So that was the depart burn zero, and now we're coming up on depart burn number one. Now this will be a short firing of the Dragon's Draco thrusters. The burn just lasting about 16 seconds. You can see that Dragon has begun to fly away from the space station and these initial depart burns essentially increase the range rate from the station so we can get away from the International Space Station and get out of uh, these various different spheres of control uh, around the vehicle that keep both of the vehicles safe. So we uh, heard a call for successful depart burn zero, that 16 second burn. That increases the speed at which Dragon is flying away from the station. It's going to start to send it up and over the space station. It'll eventually come uh, down and then behind the space station. Uh, this depart burn zero puts crew Dragon Endurance and Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna on their journey home. So there's a good look at where Depart Burn Zero takes us. We'll also be standing by for Depart Burn One. That's another short burn, about 21 seconds. Uh, that's going to keep us on that trajectory to go over uh, and then eventually down and behind the International Space Station. Depart Burn One is also going to be what's going to send us out of the keep out sphere. Uh, that is an invisible sphere around the International Space Station. It's a boundary, uh, 200 meters in radius. And it helps us determine or helps us um, govern visiting spacecraft arriving or departing the space station. So before moving into that keep out sphere, you have to, ha your spacecraft must be configured so that uh, it would not cross that boundary for at least four orbits, even if for some reason it lost all maneuvering. So we, we monitor that before and after departure. Uh, Crew Dragon continuing to make its way further from the space station. We're continuing to get some really cool views from uh, the International Space Station cameras. So this one's got Dragon and it looks like one of the robotic arms um, in, in the foreground, Dragon in the background. And uh, of course, the, the opportunity today was a little bit delayed from the initial timing, um, but 
as a result, it turned out that we had better communications coverage so we could actually get some of these views from the space station. Now, Leah, I really like your explanation of the, the keypad sphere. I, I kind of analogize it to if you've ever flown uh, into a major airport, there's an air traffic control team who's governing who can come into the airport, what timing they should go do that. And the keep out sphere is, is one of those imaginary constructs that allows the flight control teams uh, of the visiting vehicles as well as the, the flight control team in Johnson to make sure that everyone is safe and no one is inadvertently entering to a place that is habited by people. Yeah, and we have a couple of those boundaries. The keep out sphere is the one closer to the space station and the other is the approach ellipsoid. That one is a um, four kilometer by two kilometer, again, an ellipsoid, it's more, uh, it's not as much of a sphere. Um, and it is also an imaginary shape, but it also helps us monitor those arrivals and departures of any and all visiting spacecraft. Um, station on the big loop. Station. Duke and crew five, magnificent sunset departure. You guys look great. Great job up here. We're going to miss you. Godspeed. Awesome. Thank you, Frank, and the rest of the crew. We'll be following along. Some kind words exchanged between the crew members. Uh, the uh, they were talking about the big loop, so there, that is the way that we refer to the combined communications between Mission Control and Johnson, the International Space Station, visiting vehicle, so Dragon, and then, uh, of course, controllers here in Hawthorne. Yeah, and we were talking about uh, the approach ellipsoid. So what we're in right now where we're talking on that big loop, this is joint operations. Both mission control teams working together with Crew Dragon, with the space, or with the space station. Um, and we are actually coming right up on depart burn one. So that's what's going to take us up and over the station. Um, but yes, it, it must be a little oh, in confirmation that depart burn one has started. Again, this is about a 21 second burn uh, using those service section Draco thrusters. And every once in a while, uh, the thank you, thank you to the ground station uh, or the ground operators on the the Johnson side. They give us some higher Dragon SpaceX on the big loop depart burn one nominal, and we see Dragon on a nominal trajectory away from station. At this time, you are go to doff suits per procedure four dot oh one two. And finally, I have a reminder that the big loop will be deactivated following Dragon's exit from the approach ellipsoid. And copies and to the teams at NASA and SpaceX, thank you for an incredible expedition that has done your tireless efforts and attention to detail that have helped make this mission successful. I can't tell you how great it feels to be part of such an incredible team. And to the crew on board the International Space Station, you've got it. Make us proud. We'll be following along your mission. And to our friends and family, thank you for following along and being a part of our mission. It has been a privilege to add to the legacy. Semper Fidelis. It is absolutely overwhelming to back away from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we've called home for almost half a year. Station copies, too. Stay flight. Are incredibly proud. So a few it's things. It's absolutely overwhelming to be backing away from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we call home for almost half a year. All of us on Crew 5 are incredibly proud of the work we've accomplished while we were there. And to everyone who had a role in Expedition 68, whether direct or indirect, you should feel the exact same way. We thank you, and we're excited to get back to that beautiful planet of ours and those wonderful people who live on it. Thank you. That was a beautiful view of the space station. I see it. All the uh, mission control centers all over the world, thank you very much for your support. It's a privilege and a pleasure to work with all of you at the mission control centers. And uh, it's a crew, Sergei, Dmitry, 
Jason, Steve, Woody, Beltran, and Andre. Bon voyage, and I will be here for a long time. Thank you. Thank you.